oxtail, sheep's head, didn't affect us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now I'm Giles Walker, and um, I am um, the artist putting on this piece, Monster. There's two cows <coughs> talking in the field. One said, What do you think about that mad cow disease? The other one said, uh, Don't affect me, I'm a fucking duck. <laughs> <laughs> this is BBC One. Enjoy yourself, son. What a lovely atmosphere in the air tonight, eh? eh? When white people get together, we can enjoy ourselves, can't we? <laughs> It's funny the way I got into art because uh, uh, I wasn't allowed to do it at school but I ended up going to Goldsmiths University back in the 80s and doing um, drama, drama in English. Yeah. And I sort of came out of college wanting to be a scriptwriter but then uh, the new toy waste company had squatted in the yard next to where I was living so got to know them and they were going to, um, to Berlin to drive a ramming machine through the Berlin Wall and I kind of fancied a bit of that so I sort of jumped on board went to Berlin with them and sort of just got into doing sculpture scrap sculpture working with them and just went on from there really I don't think I'd ever do sort of theatre again and it's just quite funny coming round to what I do now where it is quite theatrical I end up sort of writing scripts again instead of casting I build the cast and, uh, and then sort of direct it so yeah in a funny way it's all come round again yeah, Thirty years cool. later. We want to help, but I need you to talk to me. It's not just about immigration, it's, it's about the jobs in this country. If you're not prepared to work, well then I think they should get nothing. Have you ever been involved in or supported terrorism? Have you ever said or written anything that praises or justifies terrorism? <coughs> so, New Toy Waste Company, we're, we're fundamentally scrap artists, yeah? So, we, I was building static stuff out of scrap. We bring in old cars to the warehouses, rip them up, build stuff have parties or sell them whatever to make money and then um, I started getting into uh, you know you pull a car apart you'd find a windscreen wiper motor and you think oh I'm, you know I'll make my sculpture sort of flap its wings or nod its head or something and then that's sort of, then you put in two motors and then within time you kind of like end up with eight motors and I built this kind of DJ for this job in Japan and I was sort of playing it like a piano you know trying to sort of make its arm go up and down and all that and then and that around that time um, the internet got invented or, or became sort of like accessible to you. And then once you got on the internet, you suddenly realise that you don't have to play a piano. There's little kind of, you know, little PCBs that do the whole job for you. You can pre-program it, blah, blah. And that's got you to that stage where you can suddenly make something move sort of smoothly and stuff. And then just became obsessed with this sort of, with making things move. And because uh, you're on a budget, you don't have any money. You, every motor costs you money, so, so you have to sort of. You then become obsessed with gesture because you know, like a, how someone holds their fag, probably says a lot more than you know, how they fucking walk or uh, sorry, how they walk or whatever like that. And uh, so you become obsessed with the small movements, and it just snowballs really. And it's a quinolone antibiotic. Please, sir. I want some more. You'll have a two-minute cold shower tomorrow morning. I am. Um... I hid it for the first five years. Behind my back. No, no, don't say that. Lying <coughs> to you about it and lying to the school as well. I don't know why I've 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 um, uh, collected that title because I don't I I never have really parted 
But I know what I saw, my lord, and it weren't right. I've never really felt the need to go and party. What I found was the first time I did it, I got a release from it's it. It's just such a very odd way to go about things. It is, I can see that now. No, it was a shooting week. Um, mostly cutting, scratching, overdoses, <coughs> anything I could do, really. A simple one. Did you actually make everyone of these ones in your soul? Yeah. By yourself? I made it all absolutely by myself. My, my, uh, my, my sons helped me sand the, the wood on the legs. You must have. My other son created the penises. Um, a very negative coping mechanism for me. At the time, there was no indication to me or anybody else <coughs> that that was what he was doing. But well, everybody did it back then. This is BBC One. But I have a magic chair that does all sorts of things. One, two, three, hey presto. As I was building moving figures out of scrap, I sort of became um, really interested in the idea that uh, that I was I was making these figures out of out of the rubbish that people throw away and in but and I was setting these figures as characters in the future that were redundant and it, that was it was all about how you know you buy a mobile phone latest technology and then you know a year later it's out of date and it's like uh, I was building these so-called robots and then making them into homeless figures or people that have fallen through the net of safety net of society so it's kind of um it was like the redundant technology, but us sort of humanising it, and uh, and that so the whole thing fitted together. So like I was making things out of the, the the technology that people were throwing away, but also using it to show how technology, you know, is is useless before it's even invented, really. And, and yeah. That's the first time that he hit me. I don't particularly recall what it was that set it off. I imagine you know why. For being a nuisance. What do you mean, being a nuisance? Are you there? What have we done? Done. The way you just sit there looking at everyone. Have you seen? And as far as monsters concerned, um, I, yeah, I think um, I just decided I was. Well, it started off really simple idea. I was only going to buy, build three figures, and I thought I wasn't going to use scrap this time. I was going to use wood and make it really so sort of beautiful and crafted. So I started on the mice. And uh, once I built them, I just felt it wasn't enough. I wanted, to, and I, as I was building them, I kept on adding little ideas and stuff. And, and then I decided it was going to be something totally different. And uh, I wanted the mice dragging something along behind it. And I started building all the, the, the characters I wanted to appear behind it. So that's what I did. Ten percent of the time. I am English, and I'm proud of it. back. Think of English. I have got a terrible headache. Well, I was there, so there was a dinner. I don't think it was quite as as you might put it. Yeah, okay. I was there for a. I was there at a dinner. Yeah. Do you know how many people? That's that's um where I failed. <laughs> uh, I haven't offered much hope, but I kind of think uh, the hope lies in, in exposing the sickness, you know, as a sickness. But yeah, I think I'm. I wish I had put in put in some kind of um you know some. Some glimmer of optimism, but um, there isn't any, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, in the piece, there isn't. <laughs> but yeah, good question. But that, that is, I think that's where it fails for me, the piece, in that sense. It's like, a, would it be nice to offer a, 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 a green light or something? They're playing dance music in town. I can hardly breathe outside. <laughs> We're doing everything we can. Beef, Yorkshire pudding, roast potatoes, cauliflower, carrots. My mum doesn't cook anything else except cheese and toast. It's funny because the mice were meant to be the best bit and they're my least favourite really. I don't know why. I think I haven't spent enough time on them really, movement wise. But I think, um, you know, I guess what's my favourite bit out of it actually is the dialogue. And that was the hardest bit to do. You know, when you, when you do... Um, dialogue or audio for a sculpture your biggest fear is is if it's giving it an, a, a really short shelf life because you want people to come back and see a sculpture again and again and get different things from it every time they come so you're not doing you're not writing a play you're writing a piece that evokes emotion and 
and depending on where you're standing in that around on that piece of uh, round monster depends on what emotion you're getting at that time and you can revisit it again and again and it still won't make total sense I haven't written sense I've just written a piece that conveys a sort of I guess a kind of sense of chaos and an anger frustration I don't know what he's talking about but a breeding ground for bacteria. Do I regret the fact that, that, that he has quite obviously conducted himself in a manner unbecoming? Unbecoming? Yes. He was a sex offender? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm being polite, mm -hmm. in the sense that he was a sex offender. What did you imagine you were witnessing? Has anybody ever touched your body without your permission? She was very specific <laughs> about that night. It started as just a couple of little slaps. I wonder if you have any sense now of guilt, regret, or shame about any of your behavior and your friendship? <coughs> no. <coughs> Absolutely no to all of it. The whole body's rotting. Well, we did ask to speak to someone from the BBC. I, decided, I thought I was going to do it all from the arches. I was just going to sample the arches and make some sort of like horror, horror movie out of it, you know, a horror piece out of it. And uh, I don't know, after three hours of listening to the arches, I gave up on that idea and uh, just used. I, had, I have put arches in there. Don't tell anyone. There's the arches in there. And but then I sort of yeah. So I started looking at all these other bits pieces, pulling them in from old films. And I definitely wanted it to be British because um, the piece is very much about Britain. And uh, so I was using old British films and stuff. And I still had all these bits and pieces that I couldn't quite gel. And then. Prince Andrew did that kind of car crash interview and uh, it was something like, yeah, that's the main character and I'm going to weave all these bits in and out of that and that's enough of a, of a sort of, of a thread running through it that'll hold it all together. Well, you need to uh, I believed him. So I took him back. We're all in this together. Do I believe so, my lord? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And she realises that it was just another tactic to try and get her back with him and get his own way again. It was a good piece of art. It was standard experiment. It will take on references as reference comes along. I think, yeah, what Boris Johnson's done is, uh, is expose, probably expose the establishment for what it is better than any other government <laughs> has in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so it, it's made the piece probably more obvious than I wanted it to be. <laughs> but yeah, I think a uh, you know, good piece of art should probably um, be able to be reinterpreted and reinterpreted as it goes on. God, I'm ashamed of you. Why am I not being given anything decent to read? I don't We're all know. in this together. Clearly you have no love for your country. You're not a mother anymore. Now take this away, fetch me some dinner, no, conduct anything. yourself more professionally in the of future. Of course, England, mate. Three, one, two world wars, one World Cup. It's great. Carl Paul and Kenya. Bring that back, Mr. I think firstly, the, f the fact that what Left Bank actually is and, and how, it, how it, the role it plays in the community, I think is a kind of, for me, almost more important than the building. It's a beautiful building and I've really, you know, it's, a, it's such a privilege to put it in here as far as, and the piece looks great in it. But I think the fact, the role that Left Bank plays in the community is, for me is, is almost more important than the building. And it's just all the things that are going on and, and we come out of here, come in and out of here, I think it's amazing. But yeah, as far as doing it in an old church is concerned, um, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, this piece is about um, the establishment and the church plays a very dominant role in the establishment, you know, and it's quite interesting being in a church that is no longer used for worship but used for, um, for uh, the good of its community in a different way, you know. Some kind of infection, but we won't know until we get.